Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I've got to say, I've never had more fun playing with a new champion than Helicath. So many ideas about where he can be really, really useful. And I was thinking to myself, can he be one of these uh, like Bommel heroes? Can he be the solo Bommel artist with his block damage? Can I get him to work full auto? And I was like, damn, we're going to go to town. And I actually did some work and I sent the guys at HH Gaming a um a link to it and i was like i've done it i full auto bommel straight away and it literally took me about 20 minutes to do i then uh sent the screenshots over and saf said uh that's that's normal right and i was like what do you mean it's normal the test server defaults me back to normal and i was like ah, no so i thought oh, i'll just try and run it again on hard clearly hard is a lot harder than normal and i spent the next few hours coming up with this bad boy so get ready. So the cool thing here is, it's actually quite slow speeds. And it's the same speed requirement for every level of Bommel. Okay, so the speed is the same, but the, the stat requirement goes up significantly as you go from like normal through to hard. So obviously, if you're somebody who is struggling with Bommel on normal, Helicaf's going to be able to come in and do a ton of work for you at these speed ranges. And honestly, I think, you know, in terms of like HP requirements, it's, it's more like, 40 50k hp and i did it first time around with like 55k i was like this is easy what's everyone stressed about bommel for i then went on to hard and the requirements are way more stat intensive but then bommel 90 is probably the hardest boss in the game i think there's another champion maybe samar can do a similar thing with a similar kind of set of stats or whatever but i figured why not show this one off because i don't think there's anyone else who is basically auto friendly that can solo it as well as this dude so what's going on We've got him in Immortal and Regen gear, okay? And I have got a lot of HP here, 97k HP. You do need to be north of 90k HP for this to work. Otherwise, you're just going to get wrecked. The speed requirement. So, Saf's done some work for me here on speed because I wanted to actually try and give you guys uh, a sense of numbers. And the true speed that you need is 239 to 249, okay? 239 to 249, that's a true speed. And... You get some speed through masteries. So you actually get an extra 18 speed through Whirlwind of Death if you kill people along the way. So you absolutely need to make sure that he is doing some killing along the way. You also want to take Rafa the Slain to give yourself some extra damage. And ultimately, all of your damage on the boss comes from Warmaster, which means it's hella slow. It's a really slow boss fight, unfortunately. I can't find a way to speed it up yet. But I do wonder if you bring in some like squishy people that do a ton of damage like Astrolift, for example. Astrolift could come in, slay a load of bombs on, and then just, just die off, and you get yourself a load of damage early, and then he carries on to kind of solo it. Maybe that would be a cool strat. Or, you know, another bomb champion, maybe like a Gaius could do the same type of thing. Just someone who's going to lay a load of damage down before they then die, and then Helicaf kind of does the rest. I have tried it a number of ways, okay? And this is what I've found to be the best mastery setup when i tried it on support tree i was trying like spirit haste which gives you 24 more speed you can definitely use this if you are going for a lower level of bommel yeah so basically it means you get 24 more speed as your team die and therefore you can get to that speed requirement even easier unfortunately you just take too much damage when you're on bommel 90 and i needed things like blast proof to take less damage uh, actually re rejuvenation is good here to it improves the healing from your regen set and your immortal gear things like delay death just reduce the damage that bomb was doing to you that's his physical hits he just hits really hard on on level 90 hard this is the mastery tree that i went with and it's it was the most successful tree cool thing about this champion helicaf is that he is affinity positive over bommel i think he's the only champion that's relevant to bommel that's actually like decent affinity is he so yeah he comes in clutch because he's got the rng on his side rather than Bommel having the RNG on his side. And we're basically relying on the block damage, blocking all of the damage of the bombs, of the, the exploding bombs, and then his A1, or basically after that, you literally just use his A1. His A2 does some decent wave clear, and you kind of get to the boss in good shape. So this is what I've done. This is the way I've rolled it through. I'll play it through for you as well. Make sure, am I on hard now? No, <laughs> back on normal. You'd be hard. So I've gone for an HP aura champion. Yeah, so Jared gives me 33% more HP on my base health. 
yeah? Or is it always on your base health? This dude's got like 19K health. It means he gets about 6,000 extra health pool to soak up some of the damage. The bombs, which bomb will drops on you, they ignore your defense. So it's all about having enough HP to deal with the amount of damage that's coming in. So Jared, I went for on the aura. If you go for a speed aura, yeah, you basically, let's say it's a 19% aura. That's like adding 19 speed to your build. So you could go, you could get your HP in a different way and your speed in a different way. Depends how you want to do it. But I went with speed in my gear, HP on the aura. I've then bought in a little bit of a wave clear here. So we've got Draco into Skull Crown. So I tried it with Ethos. Ethos does too much killing. I want Skull Crown to do the to, to do like a big tickle and let my Helicap actually do the killing so that I get those mastery procs going. In terms of setup here, I've left myself over this side just so you can see it. We've got Helicap uses his A3 and then won't use it again for waves. Same thing on both waves. That basically means that we're not going to take a load of damage from the enemies. And it also means that if the enemies start hitting us, he's just going to counterattack and kill them as quick as possible. Same thing on the second wave. And then on the final boss, we're going to use our A3 whenever we can. We're going to turn off the shield ability. Some people might refine this better than I've done and get the shield to actually enhance what you're doing. But the shield is just another buff to rip off, which means another bum, another bomb can land on you. I actually don't want much accuracy in my build because I don't want to land the weaken. If I land the weaken, I get more bombs on me and the bombs do hella damage against 90 hard. So you don't want all of those extra bombs to land. So let's get into the build or into the run and you'll see how this runs through. So we basically go Draco, drop defense and weaken. This could be any drop defense champion into a nuke, into a finisher. Yeah, so we've got three kills so far. Um, which has basically got my speed up, that extra 18 speed. That's what we needed. And then as we roll through, I guess I could have someone like a Renegade here to refresh and then let me do the same thing again, wave two, which would actually be cool. It'd probably speed it up for me a bit because a wave two clear is pretty damn slow. Uh, I wanted to make sure though that my Helicaf does get enough kills because if he doesn't get the kills, then it basically falls apart. Let's get on to the kind of boss stage. This is going to take an extra 30 seconds or so. Okay, so make sure that when you're coming up to the boss, you turn auto off. And then at this point, you basically need to just do three A1s. It's a shame you can't make this like programmable as well, because then it would be full auto. But you just have to step in, do three A1s, and then you're on auto mode. Now, it is still a little bit RNG factored here, because if you land your weaken, you're going to drop another bomb on you. And honestly, if you get three bombs on you and an HP burn at the same time, I don't think you can survive that. Each of these bombs is going to do about 22 to 23,000 damage. See there, 22 and a half thousand damage per pop. Even two and an HP burn can get you low. You know, if you're not north of kind of like 95k HP in your build, then you're going to struggle with those bombs going off. We are the positive affinity here, which does mean that we. We kind of have some, almost like you rely on a bit of lucky spells, like weak hits like that. Sometimes you can get uh, some of the bombs not land, that type of thing. So kind of RNG is in our favor rather than in Bommel's favor, but still it is tough. But with this speed tune, as long as you've done the right speeds that I said earlier on, basically when it comes around to the, the explodey bombs coming up, you've always got block damage on. That's never a risk. The explodey bombs will never be what kill you. It will be Bommel with his big old club clubbing you in the face over and over again. And normally it's when he hits you and explodes bombs that you're in danger zone. And you will find, you know, it's a slow run here. We've only done a, a tickle of health. It's going to be a good like 15 minute run worth of damage. So I guess I'll let it play through and, and kind of show you where we get to. And I will say, like, I've done a lot of testing today, a lot of testing. And we're currently on about a, a three out of four success rate with the build that I've got. There's still RNG that can go against me with like a weakened landing or something like that. And it just, you know, stuffs my run. So it's not 100% foolproof, but often you just need to kill Bommel once and then you move on with your day and you go and do some other content in the game. Albeit some people, and, and rightly so, the gear is good. Some people do want to farm level 90 hard. Like that's where you get your good chances to drop the resistance gear. And this resistance gear is really strong against Hydra and in some of the endgame arena stuff. So it's kind of up to you 
whether you'd want to keep going. But look, I'll let it play through for a bit and then we'll kind of see how long it takes us at the end. Just bringing it back in, we're like halfway through his health, nine minutes in. I mean, it is a slow run. I'm not going to take anything away from that. It's a slow run, but the speed tune works like a dream. All of that is good and we're kind of regenerating our health in a good way. I've not really had any kind of poor RNG. A couple of the times I'm down to 20 odd percent health, but eventually we just kind of claw it back up when we get our kind of good spells. And yeah, I mean, it feels solid. It feels consistent. But I will say probably, you know, based on the amount of times I've seen myself go down to 20 odd percent health, almost like this right here, double bombs plus a, a burn, it does chunk you. It chunks your health down. So if you get a few kind of bad ones like that in a row, maybe it's, it's not going to be as consistent. But you absolutely do need to get yourself up above that 95k health. But there you go. Helicath is not just going to be a clan boss champion. I also think he's going to be awesome in Hydra. I've already kind of shown a little bit of him in Spider. But Helicath versus Bommel, one on one. Helicath is going to win. Anyway, guys, I've been Hell Hades. We've been killing Bommel. I will see you later.